John Lee made a really useful observation one time, that when you're working on concentration, there are three factors that are causes and two that are results. The causes are directed thought, evaluation, and signalness of preoccupation. In other words, you keep directing your thinking to the breath, and you evaluate it. How does it feel? If it doesn't feel good, you can change it. You can change the rhythm of the breathing. You can change how you conceive the breathing. Where is the breath coming in? When it comes in, which directions does it flow in the body? And are there different flows of energy in the body working together, or are they working at cross purposes? If they're not comfortable, if there's something wrong with them, what can you do to change them? Either in the way you think about the breath, or the rhythm you give to the breathing. Try to get to know this energy as clearly as possible, and try to experiment with how you can make it really comfortable right now. And as you do this, the mind should get more and more absorbed in the breathing, so that really does feel you are just with this one thing. When everything comes together just right, then the results come. A sense of ease and pleasure, and then a sense of rapture, which can be anything from just a sense of fullness and balance, just really nice energy in the body, to some pretty strong feelings of energy flowing through the body. Sometimes it's a feeling of fullness that gets so full that you feel like you're going to drown, at which point it gets unpleasant. Just remind yourself you're not going to drown. The body's here. It's got total access to the atmosphere. Let everything come to balance. It's important that you focus your primary attention on the causes. And as for when the results will come, don't set up that expectation. Just do the work. Try to get absorbed in the work. Try to get interested in the work for its own sake. And then when the results come, you're not going to be thinking about whether they're quick or slow. They're there. And you stick with the work. The more absorbed you can get in the work, then the less likely you are to try to grab onto the results and leave the causes and then find yourself with nothing. So we do know that the work we're doing here has results, but you can't focus on when you're going to get them. If you're going to set up an expectation, set up this expectation. There are going to be problems that you're going to encounter, but you can expect to get past them. That's a helpful expectation, because sometimes we come to the meditation and we're pretty discouraged. We've been meditating for a long time, haven't gotten the concentration we want, here's one more hour here and it's probably not going to work. That kind of expectation doesn't help at all. You expect that there will be problems, sometimes things will come together just right, and you can expect that they probably will fall apart. That's natural too, so you don't get discouraged by that, the fact that they fall apart. But you keep plugging away. Just take it as one more challenge to overcome. The expectation is, I can do this. That's something you want to nurture. And as for how long it's going to take, don't make that an issue. Think about how long samsara is. It's a lot longer than this path. And the path of samsara is full of brambles and thorns and all kinds of other things. They even have brine sickles. I was reading about this just the other day. These little animals living under the ice shelf down in Antarctica. The water temperature is pretty constant year-round, and they're adjusted to it, and everything is fine. And all of a sudden this stream of super salinated water comes through a crack in the ice above them, and it comes down so fast. It freezes the water around it. Hits the ground and kills any animals that it hits. Poisons them first with the salt and then 
kill some of the kill some of the ice, and it just kind of flows down the, the bottom until it reaches bottom, where it can't flow any further. It's killed a lot of things in its past path. Samsara has things like that. Fingers of death coming out of the sky. Whereas the path we're practicing doesn't have things like that. You may encounter obstacles that you don't expect, but you want to hold in mind the expectation, okay, whatever the obstacle, there's a way around it, and you can use your ingenuity and learn how to develop your patience and work your way around that, and you'll be a stronger person as a result. Encourage that expectation. The other expectation that you want to discourage, of course, is when things have been going well and you just assume that they're going to go well without your having to do much to maintain them. That kind of expectation sets you up for a fall. And don't expect that simply by following the instructions without thinking you're going to get anywhere. John Fuhring had a student one time with very strong powers of concentration. At one point he said this. Of all the people he'd ever taught, this one woman had the strongest concentration he'd ever seen. But she expected that by doing an hour of concentration practice every day, it would automatically make her anger go away. And then she was very upset when it didn't go away. And he had, had to explain to her, well, you also have to use your ingenuity, you have to use your discernment as well. And she thought that the discernment would come immediately from doing concentration. So that kind of expectation is something you don't want to you don't want to touch. You have to carry the concentration into your daily life and then notice what disturbs it. And try to use your ingenuity to figure out, okay, what's the problem and how do I get around it? The concentration helps as a foundation for doing this, but it's not going to do all the work. You have to think and use your own ingenuity. A lot of the practice is a puzzle. So expect that it'll be a puzzle, but also expect that there is a solution to the puzzle. And stick with the causes. The Buddha talks about desire as a useful factor in the path. That it's one of the bases of success, and it's part of right, right effort. But the desire has to be focused on the causes. Dogen, the Zen monk, has an interesting passage where he talks about how the development of the path is the same thing as the realization of nirvana, or the cessation of suffering. In other words, he talks about the duties with regard to the Four Noble Truths and says that these two duties are actually the same thing. And some people take that passage and they cut out the word of the duties and all of a sudden it becomes the path is the goal. But that's not what Dogen is saying. In the process of developing the path, you are going to be realizing the goal. And the purpose of that teaching is to focus your attention on the path, and not keep glancing down the road, asking, well, when are, when are the lights going to come, and when is the rapture going to come, and when is this, that, and all the psychic powers I've heard about, and when's jhana going to come, and when are the noble attainments going to come? If you're focused there. You're missing the path. You're going to trip over things, run into things, wander off the path. If you keep looking at the path, working with the path, in the looking and in the doing, you're going to uncover something of real value. The goal lies in the path, in the doing of the path. You keep this in mind. You keep your focus right on what you're doing. Keep your focus on the causes. Keep your desire focus on the causes. You want to do the cause as well. And have the expectation that you will be able to do them well. But don't measure the path against the calendar. Sometimes people say, I've been meditating all this time and I haven't gotten the results I want. Maybe that. The obstacles in your path may be different from the obstacles in other people's path. The fact that you're working with your obstacles, that's the important thing. And John Mahabhu has a nice passage where he says that when you read about the defilements, they're all in nice little rows. 
But when they come up in the mind, they don't come up in nice little rows. They don't come up in the same order that you would read them in the text. They come up willy-nilly. And so you have to be the kind of meditator, the kind of warrior who's able to take on whatever the enemy throws at you at any particular time without expecting that it's going to follow some rational step-by-step -step sequence. Things come out of left field. And they may hit you on the head the first time, but the next time you're prepared. At some point you'll catch it. That's the expectation you want to keep in mind, that whatever the problems, you can do them. Now the problems they've, themselves may be unexpected, and the amount of time that it takes may be unexpected. But don't let that be an obstacle. And don't let that kill your expectation that you're up for this and you'll be able to do it. When is not the issue. The issue right now is what obstacle are you facing right now and how are you going to get around it? Learn how to get interested in that. And the practice as a whole becomes one interesting problem after another. And each solution gets you that much closer to where you want to go.